Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to do in painting with the new Flux model. If you stay to the end, I'll even teach you how to use Facebook's new Segment Anything tool to select items in your image for in painting. I'm Endangered AI, and let's get plugged in. So as you can see here, I've prepared a workflow for us to work with. Now, there's a few nodes that we need to keep in mind. Number one is the Load Image node, where we're going to load the image that we want to inpaint. If you've created an image using Flux on a separate workflow, this is the time where you would download it and then upload it here for this workflow. In addition to that, we're going to be using this node called InPaint Model Conditioning. And that's pretty much all you need for a basic inpainting. It should be part of the standard Comfy UI, and if you can't find it, make sure your Comfy UI is up to date. Once you've pulled it into Comfy UI, you'll need to connect a positive and negative parameters, the V, pixels, which is the image that's going to be inpainted, and the mask. So let's go ahead and connect that up. Let's plug in our positive, our negative, and our V. And if you're using the standard Flux workflow, which you can find down in the description below, if you don't know how to set up Flux, I have another video over here, which you can check out. Go ahead and connect that out. Now for pixels and mask, we're gonna go back to our load image node. Make sure that you have the image that you want to open in mask editor, and go ahead and color in the area that you want to mask. Down here, you can set the thickness and opacity of your mask, as well as the color. Be careful when setting the opacity, as I believe this sets the mask to allow parts of the background to be seen. So if you want the model to understand what is underneath the mask, lower your opacity. If you want the model to not have any knowledge of what's underneath the mask, make it in full. Here, I've got it set to about 70, 75%. Click Save to Node, and you'll see here that you've got the image and the mask. Feed those in to model conditioning. Let's do that here. And then we're going to feed out the positive prompt over to basic guider. If you're using an advanced guider, such as the dual CFG guider or the perp negative guider, go ahead and connect the negative one as well. However, in this case, we're not really using a negative prompt, so we're just going to ignore it. And then connect your latent down to the sampler custom advanced. Again, all of these nodes should be available in the standard flux workflow. Once you've done that, head on over to the green prompt box and type in what you want to be replaced in the mask area. In this case, I've put here wearing a gold and black dress and go ahead and cue the prompt. Now, the process is not perfect and you won't always get a perfect result, but I typically find running two or three generations gets it right. And as you can see here, Flux has managed to successfully inpaint my image. Now, in this particular instance, the prompt adherence is not the best as it is technically a gold and black dress, but the black parts are really just the shadows from the frills. However, with a few other prompts that I've tried, such as a gold and red dress, I've seen more successful results. Now, there's a few ways to improve on this, and if you don't want to spend your time coloring in the areas that you want to inpaint, particularly if they are items such as articles of clothing, body features, and so on, that you just want to highlight quickly and inpaint, I'm going to show you a separate workflow using Facebook Segment Anything 2. And in that workflow, we go through a couple of additional techniques to try and fix some of the issues that can arise with inpainting. So as you can see here, I have another workflow prepared to showcase how we're going to use Segment Anything 2 to select and inpaint parts of a source image. As you can see here, I've got my source character with brown auburn hair, and I've turned it into this blonde hair. And here's another example doing the same thing with red hair. So how do we do that? If we look at the workflow, up here I have a section which segments the parts of the image that we want, and down here is the inpainting. If we look up here at the top, everything is handled by this Florence to Run node. Now, Facebook actually uses Florence 2 by Microsoft to create their Segment Anything tool, and likewise, we're going to do the same thing here. So if we look at the setup, we've got Florence to Run here, connected to Florence to Run, we have the download and load Florence 2 model, which can be found using the Comfy UI Florence 2 created by Kijai. And then connected here to the image section, we have the source image, just plugged right in. Over here, we can designate the area or component that we want to segment out. In this case, I've set hair. One thing to make sure is that in task, you've got referring to expression segmentation set up. If you use caption to face grounding, it will create a bounding box around the area and select the entire thing. So I tried that earlier and what it did is because it created a bounding box around the face and it actually masked out the entire body. That is not what we want. So make sure you set that. 
fill the mask true, and I typically leave everything else as is. After Florence to run, I put a preview image to make sure that everything looks right, and then I feed the mask into a preview image. Now there's a couple of additional steps here that I've added in because what I found is with these precise masks, you end up with results like this, where the edges of the mask area kind of have this strange effect showing where the mask used to be, and it just doesn't get in-painted properly. So to combat that, what we're doing is we first pass the mask through a grow mask where I increase the mask by anywhere between 10 and 30. And then I run it through a Gaussian blur mask. Now the Gaussian blur mask is available in the impact pack, which is another custom node pack that you'll need to download. I then convert it to an image so I can preview it here. And then just like before, we feed the mask into the in-paint model conditioning. And everything that you see down here is exactly the same as what you saw earlier in the video except that we're now feeding in a mask automatically generated by the segmenting tool. And as you can see, with just a couple of words, I'm able to segment and in-paint the areas that I'm interested in. Here I've done the hair, and here we're going to try and do the dress. As you can see here, the dress has been successfully selected. Here we've grown the area and blurred it out, and hopefully we'll get a good performance. While we wait, let me tell you a little bit about how I came up with these images in the first place. I did them using this awesome prompt database. Initially created for Midjourney, it's been updated as well for Flux. I went through the portrait photography section of the prompt database, found an image that I liked as a starting place. In this case, it was this one. I grabbed the prompt, skipping out any flags for Midjourney. And by the way, not only is it a visual library, but you can also come down here and compare what the same prompt will do for Midjourney versus what it does for Flux. I grabbed the prompt, brought it over into Comfy UI set up for Flux, dropped the prompt in, made some minor modifications for the character description, and I'm off to the races. This database has been incredibly helpful, and if you guys wanna check it out, links are in the description below. So coming back here to the in painting, we can see that once again, all I had to do was type in dress, and it's done a fantastic job in creating a new dress for me. In fact, I didn't even have to change the prompt. I forgot the prompt with woman with blonde hair, and it was still able to understand that, that what needed to be in painted was in fact a dress. I will say one thing though, even though in this particular instance it's performed very well, some level of description is very helpful when in painting with flux. So in the past, for example, I would put just blonde when the hair was selected and it would struggle with giving me something good. If I change it to woman with blonde hair, it worked really well. Uh, in this case, let's try woman with steampunk dress. So while this generates, I will come here and point out another reason why it's important to expand and blur the mask. As you can see here, it did a slightly worse job than the last generation in segmenting the dress. It actually left out the ruffle part up here. However, that should hopefully be covered with the mask expansion. And we can see here that indeed it was. It looks like it probably left a little bit as the tops of the ruffles are here. However, it still worked out really well because it just looks like the strap of a dress. So this is what's great about Flux. It's, it's intelligent enough to understand the input and work around it. And that is how we in paint with Flux. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And if you really want to support the channel, please come over to Patreon where you can find updates on the channel, ad free versions of the video, as well as a bunch of additional workflows and other goodies for my patrons. Additionally, if you are interested in the prompt database I showed earlier, it's available as part of one of the tiers. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.